Hey guys, hey, so I thought I would give you just a little bit of an update of the stuff that I've been into the last couple days. Um, <clears throat> there's, things have been kind of crazy for me because, again, um, you know that I have been trying to get myself back where I'm supposed to be and really putting an effort into changing my life. And, <clears throat> sorry, um, There comes a time in, you know, my life, I, I guess that's the way to put it, I don't know about yours specifically, but there comes a time where I, I really realized that I was living in the past. Um, I really realized that, you know, what it was that got me to 500 plus pounds. And... You know, my entire life, I've been scared. I've been scared of meeting people, and I was scared of people being horrible to me, and I was scared of getting hurt. Um, you know, I've had some some terrible stuff happen to me in my life, but doesn't everybody? If everybody dealt with their problems the same way, wouldn't everybody be 500 pounds? I sat and thought about that. And I thought to myself, I was like, I allowed my past to affect me. That I no longer wanted to try to live in the now. I was constantly stuck in a cycle of living in the past. And it was hurting me. It was hurting me because I wasn't really living at all. I wasn't living. I wasn't enjoying myself. Um... I didn't have the big marriage that I wanted, you know, as you're a little girl, and I'm sure lots of you can sympathize, you dream about, you know, your Prince Charming, you know, or Princess Charming, Princess Charming, whatever, I'm easy, you know, <laughs> your uh, person Charming, there, okay, PC, hello, that's my phone, um, I need to change that, it's awful. But, you know, sweeping you off in, into the sunset and you getting married in the big, gigantic, you know, wonderful dress and everything. And I didn't have that. I didn't have that. I, I met my Prince Charming. I met, <laughs> I met my white knight. And because I was ashamed of myself, I didn't have any of my family there. I regret that because I was ashamed of myself. I didn't go to my brother's funeral. I regret that. You know, I didn't go to my grandparents' funeral. I regret these things. These are things that I regret. And I have so many regrets. I have so many. I have so many. I, I'm a daydreamer. You know, I'm one of those people that is looking off into the distance and you're like, what the, what the fuck is she thinking about? And it's literally, I'm, I'm thinking about what went wrong and why. And I realized that it's me. I went wrong. You know, I, I always wanted to blame it on my dad dying. I always wanted to blame it because I was overweight and kids made fun of me. I always wanted to blame it on circumstance and environment and where I grew up. And the, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. But you can't. You can't blame anything but you you because you are what matters it's so hard for me to explain you know how i feel about this because you know yes i am a hundred percent you know sympathetic with everybody and all the horrible awful terrible things that might have happened in your lifetime but those are in the past and you can't change that you can't you can't change it happened you can learn from it but you can't hide from it and I was trying to hide from all of my problems and all of the people that hurt me and everything that happened to me and I ate myself to death you know that's what I could control I ate horrible things and didn't work out and didn't do anything and I was in a wheelchair and I was losing the battle and I was praying to die like, 
I can be honest. I was praying because I was in so much pain mentally and physically. My legs were hurting so bad. My back hurt. Every time I would get up, I would be in immense pain. My husband couldn't even touch my lower back. I was in so much pain because of the compression on my spine. You know, my legs, everything. You know, I was taking pill after pill after pill trying to, you know, deal with pain and trying to deal with my high blood pressure and, you know, borderline diabetes. And I was eating myself to death. And that is one of the hardest things is when you finally get that, uh uh huh moment and you're like it's nobody else's fault but my own I let those things affect me in that way it did it did I allowed tragic circumstances to affect me in a way that was unhealthy for me you know instead of taking unfortunate circumstances and learning from them and stopping them, you know, or, excuse me, or dealing with them in a different way. And that's what I've had to deal with. I've had to learn that I need to take all of my stress, all of my pain, all of my heartache, and I need to turn it into something different. I need to take it outward instead of inward. I need to remove it from me. And things will get you down and things will hurt you and people will hurt you and people will die and there is nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is we can take that pain and turn it into something else. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm taking all of my rage and my pain and my hurt and I'm turning it into working out and I'm turning it into determination and I'm turning it into willpower because I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want it and I'm not going to have it and I'm going to I'm going to achieve what I think I should have which is I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines. I'm tired of watching everybody else have children and I'm tired of watching everybody else live. I'm tired of watching. And so I'm going to stop wishing and I'm going to do because I don't want to, man, I wish I could. Or, man, I hope one day. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And there's nothing and no one or anything that can stop me. I didn't think I would ever be able to walk again. I'm walking. I've walked up to seven miles. I never thought I could jog, ever. I was told that I could never jog and that I would be in a wheelchair for my entire life. I was told that I would need a cane or a walker. You can't tell me what I can and can't do. You can't give me a sentence of you can't because I will and I'm gonna. That's just how I see things and you can too. You can see your life completely different than it is now. You know, people feel helpless and hopeless and it's easier to give up. It's so much easier just to sit there and have a pity party and cry about it and, oh, woe is me. It's harder to pick yourself back up and keep moving. It is harder for you to say, I'm not going to live like this anymore. Let's change it. Let's figure out a way to change it. If you don't like your job, find another. If you don't like where you're living, figure out a way to move. If you don't like the way your body looks, figure out a way to change it. If you don't like your regain, stop eating bullshit. And that's what I've done. I don't need it. I don't want it. And I'm going to achieve the things that I want. I love you guys. And I am starting something that I haven't seen anybody else do. I am working out with some ladies um, in kind of in a trial. Uh, it's me, Alicia, Christina, and Trisha because we've all been in that boat, you know? And I'm working with them a couple days a week um, for 30 minutes or more 
just doing walking, jogging, stretches, you know, arms, uh, weights, types of things, just in their house. They don't have to go to the gym. They don't have to buy anything expensive. I want to see if, what kind of difference I can make. Because I know they're a lot like me and they don't want this life for themselves anymore. And I want to be a good person and I want to be a good friend and it motivates me to see them working out too so camaraderie is something big for me and eventually I would like to start incorporating more people into it um, you know we're just trying it out we're seeing how it works see if it does work we don't know but the thing is is that we're trying we're off the couch we're moving we're competing with you with each other on the Fitbit you know we're, who's got the most steps today you know we are trying and that's the only thing I've ever asked is that I try and I try my hardest I give it my all I give it my best I love you guys I will talk to you soon and um, oh yeah don't forget to uh, tune in tomorrow we have uh, Amy uh, weight loss queen. She's going to be on there tomorrow and we're going to talk about her surgery and all kinds of other stuff. So I'll see you later. Mwah, bye.